Okay, all right. So um, first off, I just want to say thank you. Um, this is Candini joining us from Tokopedia as one of the senior part, uh, senior members of the public affairs uh, department at Tokopedia. So the first question I'd like to ask is, we're beginning our journey in, in understanding more about public affairs and public relations. And uh, the reason this, this actually got started was we started with university relations. Um, it, it began with actually an HR uh, issue. We were growing really quickly. And we wanted to attract talent that was specifically uh, that they cared about our mission and vision, and also had the capacity to grow as we as we grew every year. So we started doing university relations first, and we we then did I guess so we did a few successful events, and we we felt like we had this under control. And so, like I said before, Cynthia felt inspired to start her own chapter here. And the sort of I, I'd like to actually go like to help Cynthia along on her journey, which is like when you first started your journey. Do you remember sort of like looking back now? What are some of the mistakes or what are some things that you wish if I, if I knew what I knew today and I could go back to the past and correct those things, what would I have done differently? And we just actually came upon this idea of broadening the scope of PR to public affairs as one. Are there any other tips or ideas that you'd like to share with us today? All right. All right. So first of all, thank you for the question. If you, uh, if I have to take a look uh, back in my journey, actually, uh, after graduating from university, uh, I graduated. I think it was in 2013. I graduated from the University of Indonesia, and then uh, I worked for a research project. I mean, like I joined the uh, a think tank from the University of Indonesia. So we were we were conducting some research. Actually, I, I followed some research projects conducted by my professors. Actually, I, I was invited to join their team was like, uh, for uh, one year in health. If, and then after after that, uh, I left uh, for my master's degree in Paris. So I stayed there uh, for for around two years. I mean, like not entirely two years in Paris because I spent one semester working for uh, working on my internship program in Prague in the Czech Republic. Uh, and then I, I returned to Indonesia, and then I, I spent a few months uh, joining the uh, alumni, alumni section of uh, my scholarship program, which is LPDP from the Ministry of Finance of Indonesia. Uh, and then uh, after that, I started working. I think it was like early 2017, I started to join uh, public, public policy and government relations firms. Uh, to public policy and government relations firms, and then I moved to a PR firm, and then finally Tokopedia. If I have to look back to my journey, uh, I would say that I'm particularly grateful for my research background because it really helped me bring my journey both for the public policy and government relations field or in the PR field. It's actually very useful to to have a a, a critical mind. I mean, like if you have to take a look at a phenomena, you will have to be able to. Uh, take a, I mean, like to explore different perspectives. First of all, because what what the media is saying is not, uh, it, it might not exactly uh, what it is. So you have to you have to be able to consider different perspectives, and you have to be able to know where to dig information from. So you would you you can never rely on a single source of information. So that's first thing first, and then second of all would be. Uh, I mean, like during my university years, and then uh, later on, like uh, afterwards, I learned about uh, the importance of honing your interpersonal skills. I mean, like you should be able to talk to other people because when I when I was in consulting, because I worked uh, I worked on several projects for for different uh, clients, right? So I would have to be able to engage different people, starting from high high level uh, government officials, for example. And then I, ha I also had to, to talk to different uh, researchers, academics, for example. And then I, I also have to conduct some projects where that, that required me to even to go to traditional markets, for example, to conduct, uh, to conduct uh, what is that, some interview with, uh, with the head of associations, for example. And that is something that I, I learned uh along my journey that really helped me to to get me where i am today for example and then in even in my current job uh, i'm particularly in charge for uh building this uh what is that if, if you ever heard about tokopedia salam this actually uh what is that a, a feature uh on tokopedia that where, where we focus on providing halal products and then we are developing our partnerships with uh, relevant government institutions and non-government institutions as well 
as, as well as the universities. And I'm, I'm, I'm in charge for that. So I would have to be able to dig a little bit more uh, about like mapping. We, we call it stakeholder mapping in public policy and government relations. We call it stakeholder mapping. So we would have to be able to determine uh, our objectives first. And then we would have to be able to identify the issues that might have impact to our institution. I mean, like in, in short term, long term, there are, there are some possibilities uh, that might happen, like challenges that might happen along the way, right? So you would have, have to, be able to, to be able to identify in the first place. And then after that, you would have to be able to understand the characters of different institutions. For example, why you decided to talk about a topic A with, uh, with this think tank, but not to other think tank? Because basically, you would have to understand that different institutions have different characteristics. And it requires different approach as well. If, you, if you'd like to ask me, like for example, how, how, how would you uh, say the difference between, between approaching government stakeholders and non-government stakeholders? First of all, when it comes to government stakeholders, that would require you to understand like there's a, uh, what is that? How, you, how would you call it? Uh, there's a, a hierarchy in the, because this is the nature of the organization, right? In the government organization, it requires hierarchy. So you would have to be able to identify, this, right? okay, this is the director, this is the assistant deputy and stuff like that. So you'd have to be able and you would have to uh, deploy different strategies, I would say, to approach them. Like how would you engage the minister? It's totally different from the from the subdirectorate, for example. It's totally different. And then uh, if, we, if we move a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, towards like another stakeholders, for example, non-government stakeholders, universities, you would have to be able, you would have to uh, be able to get used to uh, some academic terms, for example, that they are using because I mean like the language that they are using actually quite quite different, right? From different institutions, so I would like uh, I would like to say they have to, to look, if I have to look back, first of all uh, a critical perspective I think I would say and second of all the interpreters interpersonal skills that you would have to develop. Okay, wow! Um, thank you for that deep dive. That was that was actually very very. Um, I, I took a lot of notes and and what, what <laughs> uh, so I got out of that. We need to have a critical mind and being able to find what the underlying truth is and not rely. On, on just like a surface level understanding of, of the right. matter. We need to get our interpersonal skills correct and get along with different different segments. It almost sounds like almost like a marketing exercise that there's different audience, no A, B, C, and we, we need to address with a different message, different timing, and perhaps even a different right. panel through each of those uh, each of those personality archetypes. We're, 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 if, I, if I may share, I have a, a follow-up question here, and it's related to this whole stakeholder mapping um that part sounds really new to me and and when i think about tokopedia when, when i think about a business i generally think about a business is like between between the employees and the customers and perhaps the vendor yeah. partnerships right where i wonder where where does the government sit in this ecosystem in terms of like does the government start becoming more apparent once you reach a certain scale or is it something that you you should start thinking about early on in the in the development and growth of a company, like, like yeah, that that would be that would be my question. Like, at what point does is does the government start becoming a larger stakeholder in in the progression of of, of a company like Tokopedia, for example? Right, uh, I would say that different scale of business would actually have a different. What, what would you call it? Different would, would suffer from different impacts from government's regulations. In terms of of Tokopedia, if, if if you come to think of it, for example, the one the one that I'm I'm currently handling right now, Tokopedia Salam, uh, it specifically focuses on uh, a Muslim market, for example. So we would have would have to be able to. So at Tokopedia Salam, we provide uh, a curation, a special curation of halal products, for example, mm -hmm. and then we uh, we use the technology to assist Muslim communities in Indonesia to uh, to conduct their what is that. Uh, their obligations from uh, from the religious perspectives. For, we, we can conduct the nation. We can actually uh, pay for our uh, what some some uh, financial obligation from from uh, from from the religious perspective through Tokopedia. Mm -hmm. But we as Tokopedia, we're just a marketplace. We're not the receiver. We, we're not we're not the one collecting funds. But we're just we're, we serve as a channel. So that's why we engage different. Uh, well, if you're familiar with. Basnas is actually a super a supreme body, a government body, 
that uh, that's uh, what is that? That's focusing on zakat, for example. If if, you, if you're familiar with that, it's like a certain amount of money that you pay uh, for for other people, for example. It's like a sharing your part yeah, in the community, so things like that. I mean, like if if you if you take a if you have to take a step back on the scale of the business, uh, I mean, like different government regulations would have different impacts towards our industry. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about hospitality, for example, during the uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic, then the government the, the regulations from uh, relevant uh, relevant I would say relevant ministries, for example, that would be the Ministry of Transportation, first of all, and then the Ministry of Tourism. Because if they decide, if they if they say that okay, let's stop the tourism for a while right now, no tourism, no traveling for whatsoever right now, then you would, your business would suffer, right? Mm, so, okay. So so that, that's that's where that's where uh, you that's where uh, you have to take a look at, for example, like you, you have to be able to like okay, my business, what would be the main challenges that would like issues in general that would impact uh, our businesses. In terms of hospitality, that would be transportation. That would be tourism. That would be perhaps some food, because you would have to uh, provide foods and beverages for to to cater your guests, right? And then after that, after you understand your issues, you would have to be able to under to to identify uh, which players, which actors would have a say in these issues. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So starting from that point, you would understand where to go. Interesting. So. This is actually a very bold direction because normally when I think of my participation in government, I think of it as I'm a passive, act, you know, actor. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, the government does something and I'm affected by it. But this sounds like where, where we believe that we're more active participants, where we actually negotiate with government. We, we, we try to affect policy. We try to affect hmm. policy. Is, is that Lobby. is that the correct interpretation? Yeah, I mean, like in a way that. Yeah, you would have to understand if uh, because in my in my uh, in my current job, for example, we have three functions like uh, promote, we have to preserve, and then we have to protect. For example, what are we promoting from our side to the government, or or at least or not only government but to external partners, okay. and then uh, second one is a partner partner which uh, which relation which uh, which stakeholders we would have to establish our relationship and which ones we, we might have engaged uh, with them previously but we have to preserve them right and that's like a uh, third one of course uh, preserve so you would have to be able like if I don't have a good relations with this stakeholder with this certain institution then in the future there might be certain sentiments from their side or certain certain statements from their side they might hurt our industry <laughs> I can, I can so that's how you think of it I can only think of a company like uber I remember when they were <laughs> in Indonesia I, I, I that and what you just said totally triggered a thought I interviewed at uber and it was so mm -hmm. weird during the interview they said uh, how would you do with the government if if let's say um, they try to shut uber down and my answer was I would meet with them beforehand and and try to like tell them what my company was about before before we would launch. And they said wrong answer. You would do you would go and and do the thing first and you let our lawyers take care of what happens after. Uh, I don't think that would work in Indonesia. And they were like, no, that's yeah. <laughs> so okay, I, I get it, I get it, I get this idea. Okay, thank you. Uh thank you. and also by the way, Jenny, I happen to be a great uh fan of Tokopedia. We bought we, we actually used to go to Singapore to buy equipment for our startup. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been able to find everything we need on Tokopedia now. So I've been able to yeah. be very, very happy, uh, very content user of it. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Shadi. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. So, yeah, well, so uh, actually, uh, Jing is love to shopping at Tokopedia. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh uh, well, uh, I have uh, taken note for several uh, things here. Like uh, when you are engaged with uh, every stage of um, communities of public, you have to have a different way to reach them. Uh, well, actually, uh, my question would be like, um, how did you? You are working in a like in a millennials, uh, millennials company that. A startup company or high mm -hmm. and company. How did you representative uh, your company to the government? I mean, like, 
you know, sometimes about the government, uh, the regulation, the and the things, and it's so strict, right? Uh, too stiff. And then, how did you uh, represent uh, that is uh, Tokopedia to them? So I mean, like they will still uh, take you professionally, and then maybe yeah. Uh, how did you reach them actually? Right. All right. Well, when it comes to government, for example, uh, I mean, like when, when we are approaching in general, when we are approaching a problem, we normally start to take a lead from the most difficult one and then move along to the less difficult and then the most simple one. Right. But when, in, in my opinion, when, when it comes to discussing with the government in the realm of uh, e-commerce, for example, you don't have to start big. I mean, like you, you should actually start small, starting from you would have to introduce Tokopedia over and over again, Tokopedia 101. What is e-commerce? Surprisingly, there are a lot of government officials who still do not quite understand how e-commerce works. Yeah, seriously. Everywhere. Right? Everywhere. So, so you would have to be able to prepare yourself with a deck introducing your company from the very beginning like yeah we started in 2019 so we are a c2c e-commerce what is a c2c so we're selling like from consumers to consumers and then like how it goes in tokopedia so we're providing infrastructure when you're purchasing something on our platforms we hold your money over here and then we we send the order to the seller once you uh, when the seller has finished uh their 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 task and then you confirm that you already received what you what you purchased and then you give us confirmation and then we release the money to them and there was just like okay so how long how long are you going to hold the money so where, where are you holding it things like that so you would you would have to be able to uh to think uh what is that how to make big problems big problems uh deliver it in a very simple way so we would have to, yeah, we have an escrow account. We hold it in our account. It's not actually, it's not a floating money for too long. It's like two, three days after the purchase, then you would have to, uh, if you actually, if you don't send a manual confirmation, then the system would actually uh, send an automatic confirmation and then the money would be released to the, to the sellers and stuff like that. And then uh, I think uh, in terms of Tokopedia as well, uh, one of the most important things is that you have to approach the right people for long, long, long before something actually happens. Ah. Uh, okay. So you would have to you would you would have to be prepared for any any kind of scenarios, for example. And one one of the things that, for example, Tokopedia, the way we approach, uh, the way we try to build, uh, what is that, uh, a public trust and then uh, a better trust from the government side is that. We try to approach uh, a scientific approach, meaning that starting from last year, we already initiated uh, an annual research. So we engage uh, a research center, a think tank from one of the universities in Indonesia. Last year, we already released a report signifying, uh, like focusing on the impacts of Tokopedia towards Indonesian economy. And we provide some numbers over there, like for example, 90, around 94 persons of our merchants are ultra micro merchants, meaning that their annual revenue is less than 100 million rupees per year. So things like that, the government would like to see how it goes over there because I mean, like we've been receiving calls, many calls from the government saying that, hey, we would like you to conduct uh, the surveys on COVID, the survey on COVID, because we totally have no ideas about how e-commerce works and how it's going over, how, how it's going uh, over there. So that's, we're positioning ourselves as a partner of the government. If they would like, like for, for this for this COVID-19, for example, I, I could assure you there are more projects than ever from the government. They would like to engage us in so different projects and so different uh, subsidy programs, for example. That's how they would like to, like one, once you have been able to establish yourself as like, I am, uh, what is that, irreplaceable in a way, indispensable, then the government would surely uh, turn their attention to you towards you. Oh, okay. So I think uh, do you have some talk on this, sir. I think yeah. like yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just I was just actually blown away by what you said because I was wondering when you were when um, uh, Kakandini you were explaining about how you represent yourself to the government. I was wondering whether what, what would be the context for that. 
Uh, but when you just said that, yeah, I, I, I realized that, yeah, the government, they don't have access to like, let's say, uh, macroeconomic data, right? Necessarily. Right. Data is, is, is held by private companies or they don't have, uh, they need material to get reelected, right? They need to show that I've made, right. I've made impact by my, my neighborhoods and such. So I never thought that that was actually latent. Uh, you know, we have a lot of data here, but I never thought that that would actually be useful to a government entity. Um, so that was actually quite, quite inspirational. Um, fundamentally, and, and going maybe to understand the government a little bit more, what, what does the government want from businesses? Like, like you mentioned earlier that you want to have, you want to be indispensable to the government. You want to like, mm -hmm. thing. is it because we fear that the government might just shut us down one day because they don't like us? Or is it like, like they, they need you in a certain way in order to support their own political sort of strategy. Right. So first of all, you would. Uh, what's the purpose of engaging the government? If 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 you might ask, for example, or what, what then uh, from business, yeah. basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we would have to be able to position ourselves as an institution in the sense uh, in, in the sense that a, a company that actually uh, would be able to help the government to achieve their goals. So we are we're positioning ourselves as an institution that is actually in line with your goals. We're not going anywhere against your goals. So that's something that, so you would have to be able to, to get, uh, what is that? There's, there, there, what is that? Uh, they, they should be able to see a value in you. If we like, for example, from the government's perspective, why should I engage Bukit Vista? It turns out that you would be able to propose a certain values that you would be like, for example, the government would like to uh, push the tourism, for example, right now, right? Yeah. To, to, to restart, restart the tourism uh, in, uh, in in Indonesia because of COVID, for example. Right, right. And you are you would say that you are. Uh, I'm actually one of the major players in Bali. Bali is one of the major tourist destinations in Indonesia, and we have certain information that if you start at this point, then we would actually reap certain benefits. But if you start at a different period, you would you would actually suffer from certain challenges, but you would still reap certain benefits. So. That's how you go in, like like you, yeah. From from the perspective in the field, you actually provide a different perspective to the government. Fascinating, fascinating. Because okay, uh, Shindia, this kind of relates to something I thought about before, which was we help grow neighborhoods. Um, I never really thought about the impact of, like like everywhere where we've started business because of the nature of how the internet works and reviews and everything. We're able okay. to, to to start with just a few properties in a neighborhood. And what we'll mm -hmm. see is that that neighborhood starts getting more and more people there. More people right. mean that there's an ecosystem for, for mm. business. So in a, in a very practical case, we, we took an area that was generally only for surfers and we mm -hmm. applied like pricing that allowed for year round travel. And then that mm -hmm. allowed for year round businesses instead of seasonal business mm. to happen. Right. In, in terms of that, that is helping the government in a way, right? That's right. like, wow. You're, you're creating a sustainable, ecosystem uh -huh. where the community and yourself of course as a company you and the community around you would actually benefit from your activities interesting so that, that's actually something that's actually a positive value a benefit that you would actually you could actually afford the, uh, you could actually offer to the government in a way that like roughly speaking you could actually say that the government you know guys if you're if you keep on creating regulations that actually support our business would actually be able to support the economy of your of your of, of your people on the ground. That's how it's done. Okay, I get it. I get it. That, that, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that ties everything. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That's that's very interesting. Well, actually, here Kiki has a uh, like a politic uh, politic background. Uh, Kiki, what do you think about that things? Is that uh, you are so uh, learned about that things and then. Uh, do you have anything in mind about what have uh, Chandini said as a year? Yeah, uh, it's quite insightful. Uh, so, yeah, hi Chandini. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I have learned your what is that? Your your background, and you come from international international relations, Correct. which is I believe FISIP UI. Correct. <laughs> I came from FISIP UI. So, all hi. right, hi. <laughs> so we 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 have. A little bit same background actually um and i know uh, uh, as far as i know in my major for example we learned this quasi uh, 
government is, I believe you know that, maybe you, you still remember that, uh, uh, quasi, business, uh, quasi of business and go, uh, government. It's pretty much like a PR. It's pretty much like what you, you, just, you have just said before uh, about how, how important to maintain the relationship between business and, and, and government in a way that uh, we are actually gain a benefit from from that. We got, uh, uh, for example, we got the the newest regulation or the, uh, mm. or any update for laws that might or might not uh, have uh, have some impact uh, for us. But uh, let me ask this in another way. Actually, I would like to uh, to know what is the uh, what is the actual benefits in terms of uh, uh, that that directly up. Apa ya bahasa Indonesia nya uh, directly langsung ke penjualan kita. Right. What I mean from right. our works, from our work. How, yeah. how it impacts your activities, right? How, how yeah. your, your business activities, for example. Yeah. Right. So first of all, uh, in the short term, you would, uh, what you have to keep in mind is that at least like if, if you're, for example, because the, in the news you could see that actually uh, tourism suffers one of the biggest impacts during the COVID nineteen pandemic, right? And uh, despite the government's uh, intention to restart, I mean, like reopening the tourism, there are still lots of, uh, lots of, how would say that, uh, negative opinions. Like, okay, how are you supposed to open uh, the reopen the tourism while the numbers of the, uh, while the numbers of the COVID patients is still increasing, right? So actually, the short term, if you have, if if you are able to actually uh, shape a perspective the government uh for, for the government where uh your tourism could actually like tourism yeah the, the the industry that you're focusing in is actually would be able to support the growth of the economy in general because that's what got the government's actually focusing on right now then they would actually consider to open more doors for you it's back uh i mean like uh if you have to take a look back at the beginning what's actually your objective you want to sustain your business, right? And more than that, you would actually, you would like to improve more and more in, uh, for, for your business. You would like to attract more travelers. You would actually, you would like to generate more profit. And then what you really have to do is actually to under, to, uh, to give, to provide a really, what is that? A really beneficial, beneficial perspective towards the government. You, you say they're like, hey government, you told me a few days ago that our uh, our budget, our state budget, would actually suffer from deficit. You're suffering a lot because you would have to because because the production and the consumption sectors actually suffer. And tourism could actually help you to address that problem. How? By, for example, uh, providing uh, in in the long term, for example, providing easier access for rapid test. So those who are, who actually would like to travel. Would actually have easy access towards rapid tests and they would actually be able to travel comfortably and then second of all you would be able to uh, provide incentives for example or subsidy towards the transportation cost be it aviation cost or train cost for example for, for the train tickets so people would would have uh, more incentives to travel and then third of all for example you would have to be able to uh what is that to instill this mindset to uh, play to the players in the tourism industry to perhaps to provide a different experience while still traveling safely during the pandemic. So that's how you do it. Actually, it it, it goes back from your objective, and you should be able to uh, identify the government's objectives and how you could actually make those two objectives align with each other. So you could basically help out each other. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, thank you. you. Um, this might seem like a, a really obvious question, <laughs> Kakandini, but how do you find out what the government's objectives are? I mean, uh, we, we kind of have like a, maybe a mythological understanding. You know, we, we know that the government wants like, you know, general things. But, but if I want to know specifically, let's say, uh, what does my local government want? What is their vision? What is like... How do you go? It, okay, I asked them because I was, I feel like there's always two objectives. There's the stated objective, and then there's right. a hidden objective that you don't really know about. Um, right. And and I don't know if it's it, how that exactly works. That's just that's just how how I understand how government works. But if I want to align myself with, let's say the 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 actionable objectives of the government, 
where do you begin to find out what that is? How do you how do you how do you discover that? Right, right. So so nowadays you could actually uh, get a uh, like you, you could actually access more uh, access more information from social media even because because our government is actually using more and more social media. For example, the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. They they are actually uh, if you follow their Instagram, for example. Uh, and then they, you would be able to understand, like you, you would actually get more information, like when we are holding a certain webinars discussing the uh, deficit in our state budget, for example. It's actually open for public. It's not something that you would have to be certain. It reaches certain point first, and then you would be able to. Uh, you you would actually only get uh, get access once you reach a certain point. It's not actually that way, because social media and the government's official websites are actually. They're providing more and more opportunities for businesses to get more information and more understanding on what exactly the government wants to do right now. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, like, like I said earlier, like starts from the smallest, the easiest part. Absolutely. Thank you for thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us believe this myth that like government policy is all is handled somewhere like in a dark room in Jakarta somewhere, right? Mm. Like, you know, that's where they decide the fate of the country. But yeah, you're right. Actually, I have. Yeah, if you just open your eyes and, <laughs> and see it, then then it, it it's it's always there. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. That's good, good insight. Oh, okay, right. no, no. okay, okay. Thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, question and thank you, uh, Chandini, for answering that. Uh, but okay, um, well, I think uh, Kiki also uh looks so serious here, and uh, <laughs> she has uh, she has put the question here actually as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but so yeah, I think I will go to Kiki and uh, Kiki. What what kind of question do you want to ask to uh, Chandini? Actually, I just asked uh, uh, Chandini before uh, regarding uh, the government relations, but uh, I'm I'm also curious with uh, with university relation. May I know mm -hmm. uh, for from for the start? May I know whether in Tokobodia has a certain roles that that is uh, related to let's say high, higher educational institu institution all right so in terms of uh, universities uh yeah. the like the purpose of tokopedia is actually uh help educating the uh, the younger generation yeah. uh by, by engaging universities to mm -hmm. to help uh building an understanding on what actually tokopedia is and mm -hmm. one of the one of the concrete steps that we have actually taken is actually we have built this uh, artificial artificial intelligence center at the mm. University of Indonesia. Mm. So we're we're working. we we actually donated uh, one super computer to the faculty over there, the faculty of computer science, where uh, the where the professors and the students could actually use that computer to explore more about artificial intelligence. I'm like we're not exactly uh, conducting our research over there, but we're opening opportunities. Uh, for the university to uh, expand their interest on the on the issues, I mean, like on the matters that that in a way related to Tokopedia, because we are e-commerce and we're so familiar with technology, so we would like to push them uh, in, the, in that in that perspective as well. Uh, and then on the top of that, we frequently engage academics from universities for our webinars, for example. So we're holding webinars for different issues, and we engage different people, like uh, from the faculty of law. And then the faculty of uh, social and political sciences, and a different faculty of uh, engineering, for example. But I mean, like, of course, like it is, it is uh, like the government, the the university itself is being engaged from different angles, because it's not only my division, it's not only the public policy and government relations that is engaging the universities, but of course, our engineering team they engage universities as well, our corporate corporate communications as well. They're engaging, uh, they're engaging universities as well. I mean, like, it, it depends on which angle you would like to take a look at. Okay, so is there any else? Maybe? Sure. Uh, sure. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, as a follow up question, um, just earlier, Kandini, you mentioned that you have faculty members from university with these webinars. Who, who, who are the audience? Is it the Tokopedia employee population or is it is it like students from other universities that you're inviting on behalf of Tokopedia? Like, like, is, yeah, what, what is the audience that you have? To bring the All right. Uh -huh. All right. It depends. Uh, again, it depends on the issue that you would like to discuss. If you would like to discuss, for example, uh, what is that? Uh, 
how artificial intelligence would actually help accelerating uh, the development in Indonesia, for example. It depends. It depends. You could actually, uh, if you would like to, uh, what is that? Some kind hold some kind of uh, public webinar where you educate public in general that Tokopedia has been able to help developing the artificial intelligence in Indonesia. Then you would actually uh, open it for public. I mean, like we, we normally open our webinars for public, but I mean, like each webinar has different objectives. Sometimes we would like to focus more on engaging uh, the governments, the government officials, because we would like to, for example, that's one of the ways, uh, one, one of the tools that you could actually use to influence their perspectives, right? Yeah. So it, it depends. You, but, but, but again, you would have to be able to determine your objective, objectives first. It's just like, just like marketing, different targets, different tools, and different uh, execution. Definitely. Okay, so they're, they're interested in doing this because you're bringing them an audience, right? So that they can right. get their research and their knowledge more widely. Mm -hmm. oh, interesting, interesting. I like how you're, 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 wow, I never thought about interlinking the communities. Like, like I used to think government relations is one thing and then university is other, but it sounds like you're creating an ecosystem where, and, and this, this reminds me of community management, Cynthia, right? Like you don't, right. you don't always represent yourself. You get somebody who supports your idea to represent right. the group on your behalf, and then that way they okay. Wow, wow, that's that's actually really powerful. Okay, thank you, thank you for that insight. Oh, cool. Right. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I have uh, the same thought uh, with you. Like, uh, it's kind of like a community. Uh, they build their uh, own ecosystem, and that's that's. Uh, that's pretty interesting as well about the webinar itself. Maybe for the next webinar, but oh, actually, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay, cool. Since I think the connection, uh, it's not good. Uh, but yeah, actually, uh, we do we do have a webinar that mm -hmm. we call it with the TV Evolve, and I think your your uh your what is that? I could say like your your suggestion, not a suggestion as well, like your insight about how to set a different objective is kind of like help us to easily guide us for the next uh, PVE talk. So uh, I thank you for that. And then, um, well, I think we have talked a lot about uh, government things and then Maybe I will ask you a little bit about the technical things here. Sure. Uh, it will be more about the KPI operation. So uh, if I know that you had an experience working at Red Hill before, and mm -hmm. then, yeah, uh, I understand that. Uh, of course, in the top of India as well, we use KPI things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I just want to know, like, uh, sometimes uh, in the public relation itself, KPI is uh, it could be measurable and then some might not be measurable. Right. And then, uh, when you have it, that uh, situation, then, uh, how did you define your success on a project when maybe the KPI comes from not measurable? Right. So, in the PR field actually if i have to take a look uh, back in my previous experience at red hill asia as a senior account executive uh, one of the kpis would be to generate uh, as much as uh, coverage as possible for example at uh, uh, one time i was responsible to uh, manage uh, what is that the launching of uh, 5g technology of nokia in indonesia so it was it was launched in jakarta in one of the uh, one of the hotels in jakarta so what I did back then, first, what is the objective? Okay, Nokia would like to introduce the uh, 5G technology that is not only limited to 5G mobile phones, it's not only that, but 5G technology in general, IoT and stuff. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, spread the news about the technology itself, about the capability of Nokia, that's first of all. Second of all, I would have to be able to engage journalists because we, we held this, uh, Nokia Innovation Day, we called it that way, where we invited journalists to attend a session uh, from like, uh, we also had some representatives from Nokia, from Nokia Asia Pacific, 
where they actually talked about uh, what's the de recent developments from Nokia side, and we also prepared a press release. So public relations is very uh, is very what is that is very related to press release because you would have to craft you would have to craft a press release that contains the uh, the news the message that you would like to convey. Uh, you would have, and then second of all, you would have to be able to build relations to the journalist because you would have to be able. Because, for example, for for Nokia, you could you cannot just drop a news on technology to any media, right? Not all media would be relevant for your objectives. What's the point of sending your uh, your news on technology to those focusing on agriculture, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So you would have to be able. So, so back uh, uh, at Red Hill, we use this system uh, called Telum. If you're if you're familiar with that, Telum Media. So you could actually subscribe to that service. It's a it's a I think it's a startup company in Singapore. So you subscribe to their service, and you would be able to get access to uh, all the journalists, all the media in Asia Pacific plus Australia. So you would have one, one thing that I learned from that is that. Uh, you should be able to understand where you're going and you should be able to get uh, what you want to know. Like you, you, should be, you should be able to identify the source where you would like to, yeah, that one, Telemedia, that one. Excellent. So you, you dig from that point, you should be able, you, because you can actually filter the journalist. You would like to focus, like you, 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 would, uh, you would like to open Jakarta Post, but you would filter them out for the, uh, for the journalist who focus on technology, for example. And then you should be able you, you should be able like for example like two weeks or one or around one week at least before uh, before the uh, before the event you should be able to send uh, some invitation formal invitation like using email to to their uh, to their emails and then you, should, you could actually find their their mobile numbers as well over there so you could reach out to them using WhatsApp or you could actually call them ask, ask, for, ask them for sometimes like hey hi yeah I'm from Red Hill Asia so uh, one of our clients which is Nokia. Would like to hold. We would like to hold an event where they would like to launch their five G technology next week. I'm just wondering if you'd be uh, if you'd be interested in, in attending the event. If you're interested, then we would actually send you a pass, for example, and you would actually uh, have to describe in advance about what what exactly you would like to introduce. Like five G. Okay, what is five G? Like for example, it turns out that Nokia introduced the use of five G technology to manage the cargo at the ports. So they're using drones. They're using drones that constantly send uh, information to the to the receiver. I mean, to, to the base, where like, okay, so a certain cargo has arrived. These certain cargos has left actually. So that's what, one of the implementation is the, at the port of Hamburg. So that's one of the real implementations where you could actually bring value to the media. Again, what would you offer? What's your propositions for to the media? If they, you you have you would have to be able to think from their perspectives. If you, as a journalist, write this, write this news, write something about this, how far you can explore about this story, and how much beneficial information you could provide to public. So things like that, because it's, because when you're inviting journalists, you're you're not you're literally you you should not offer money to them, right? You're not buying their attention, but you're buying, I mean, like, quote unquote, you're buying their attention by offering an information they can never get elsewhere. That's a good point. Okay. Wow. So that's okay. how you do it. Interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, I think uh, about the, the journaling, uh, the journaling is one of the type of the outreach, if I'm not wrong yet. Uh, so there are many types of outreach yeah outreach, right right uh yeah i have uh, read uh like several articles about the outreach like not by maybe like the journalist or maybe uh it's the journalist outreach it's not uh, really uh, relevant or not really working nowadays so uh, i think uh, especially for the startup company what do you think is the best uh, outreach to do nowadays. All right. So again, uh, back then at at Red Hill Asia, our clients are mostly startups. It's not. I mean, like, Nokia is actually is far from startup. It's actually an established company. But we 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 worked with different clients. For example, Sawcash. 
they they have this technology where you would be able to withdraw your money from your uh, nearest kiosk from your mini market for example that's that's how they facilitate it that's why they they, they this this started working with so many banks to allow uh these uh what is that uh, to allow people to withdraw money from anywhere from any kiosk that they see because because sometimes you need you need cash you need cash uh, immediately right so again you would have to uh dig an angle where the company that you're focusing on could actually bring value bring benefits to, to the society and how inter like what's the interesting uh part it's not it's not about how expensive the technology that you're using but you should be able to elaborate how powerful the impact would be. That's why the, you, you're, you're talking about impact. That's why people would like to understand more. But okay, so this looks like this looks like a promising startup because it brings value to the society. It makes our lives easier, to put it simply. Okay. So what what, what startups would do is actually that, right? I mean, like you're offering solutions, you're all, you're bringing values to the society. Okay. And what and how the how 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 the community how the people in that country, for example, would benefit in the long term, and in the short term. I mean, like you should be able to uh, to illustrate the short term, the medium term, and the long term uh, the long term benefits of your company. Definitely. Okay. Sir. Yes, um, okay. Thank you. Um, for Candini, that that actually just triggered another thought, um, which is. We, we, we have approached communication, which is the one thing that we control these days. We, we, don't, we can't go out and actually meet our guests or do any physical things. But I thought even communication has like kind of a stack, right? You have, you have an audience, you have a message, you have a channel, and you have timing. And even, let's say, for example, for a journalist, if you're doing outreach, maybe the same journalist at a different time would not be so relevant as, as like during maybe – Maybe like mm -hmm. say uh, you go back to the same journalist that's covering technology, but but this time of year they're not right, or there's not any interesting technology news. They're mm -hmm. going to be focusing on on maybe news about uh, let's just say for agriculture, for agriculture. Um, so what right. I found is it's the research. It, okay, this is a common theme we've been noticing across every master class, which is it seems like, and th this gets my 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 final question, which is about what is it that that distinguishes a master from a beginner in this type of world. One of the themes that we've, we've constantly have come across is that it seems like somebody who is a seasoned professional who really understands, they do most of their work in prioritization, right? They, they, they know what they're going for, they right. refine that part, and they're very, very lucid and clear about how to prioritize. I'm gonna target this journalist on this day about this subject, I'm gonna use email. Um, whereas I'm going to target, let's say this government person, I'm going to show up on site. I have this message. So they're very lucid about what essentially is, is that would, and then, and then the execution is almost very fast, right? Their execution almost takes up just, just a right. small part of their overall effort. Do you find that to be the similar case? And is, is that a, a trait of, let's say people who are skilled and professional in doing this type of work? And are there other traits that you've noticed um, that people who are really good at doing this work have that are different from people who, who begin? Right. So first of all, you're right. Prioritization is actually a powerful tool over here. It actually uh, it creates the difference because if you're prepared to approach somebody or you're not prepared to to approach somebody, that would actually there there's going to be a stark difference, right? <laughs> yeah. But but I mean. Yeah, right. I mean, like, you would be like, oh, oh okay, okay, I, I forgot my message. Like, I, what to say to this person? It's like, things like that. So, so things like that. But on the, on, the, on the other hand, what you would actually have to pay attention to as well is that how you evol evaluate your approach. This approach might work back then. Yeah. Pre pandemic, because I worked at Red Hill before pandemic, right? Right. But. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be exactly the same? We are people holding like thousands of webinars each day today where people cannot actually meet directly. We can no longer invite journalists to the hot lot for, for a grand launching and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have to be able to, you would have to be able to learn from that and you should not shy away from to learn from your competitors actually. 
we at e-commerce, we pay close attention to each other. We have an association. It is called Indonesian e-commerce association where we actually uh, conduct uh, frequent dialogues with our competitors in a way, but you should not actually, I mean, like one of one thing that I learned from, from, uh, from e-commerce world is actually is that, uh, I mean, like it is actually also apl applicable to different fields. Your allies is not always your ally. <laughs> and your opponents would not always be opponents, right? <laughs> yeah. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> Yeah, right. So you should be able to because I mean, like, what is actually perpetual is actually your interest, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm, things like that, you should be able to identify different allies for different issues and different opponents for different issues as well. That's that's actually very wise. That that is very wise. I've noticed that. Like having you right. The one thing, the one thing that stays the same is the vision and mission, but then everybody's evolving. Right. And people, you know, yeah, yeah, I have noticed that actually. Yeah, sometimes friends don't become, and then sometimes enemies become friends again. Yeah, it's it's sort of weird. Yeah, that's that is. Right. I have noticed. Yeah. That. Okay. I, I prefer to call them allies. I other. Uh, I prefer to call them allies instead of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 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 That's, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Allies is 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 based on the situation. Um, okay. Good. Right. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that, that's very interesting discussion, I think. So, okay, I think, um, yep, I think, it, oh, wow, well, uh, the time I think goes so fast. It's already uh, an hour. Uh, so I think I will go to the final uh, talk and final question. And then uh, I will start uh, from Kiki. Kiki, do you have any final talk or final uh, question that you want to uh, say uh, to Chen Muni? Yeah, uh, so far it's all good, but but I would like to connect further with you, Chandini. Maybe we can have another discussion uh, next time. And yeah, right. that's, uh, that's pretty much it from me, Cynthia. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Kiki. And then uh, maybe from you, sir, do you have any final question? I, I said I had a final question, but I thought of one more. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please. So I, I was thinking... If you were can, uh, if you were to summarize like a word, if you were to give like one word the most power to represent what it takes to be successful in doing this as a career, doing this as a profession, doing public affairs, public relations, interacting, what word would you choose to to sort of encompass that that theme? I would say to have a curious mind. <laughs> never gets out of it. I thought that on you. I thought that on you. You keep on being curious all the time. You should never be able to be satisfied so easily. Like, okay, this is done. Bye. I'm gonna have a good weekend. No. <laughs> okay, stay curious. No, that's exactly the word I used at my um, at my last webinar. Thank you. It's okay. Let's uh, I said stay curious. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Okay. Uh, anything else, sir? Oh, uh, I'll let you ask the last one, Shithi. It's about the, okay. uh, the the mentor thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, uh, Chanini, I think this is very very interesting, um, like very very interesting session. And then, uh, you know, uh, when you said that stay curious, yeah, I already uh, see your curiosity at the very first time of this session begin, and then uh, that, that's very good uh, for me to learn uh, from you as well. And then, uh, if you may, uh, maybe like suggest another person or another mentor that you learn from, or yeah, maybe you can give us another suggestion person that we can learn from about this PR or public efforts. Uh, and maybe you can introduce us to them. Right. I think I have to take a look first at my, uh, at my, I mean, like at my LinkedIn, I think. Then uh, I would actually. Uh, Come back to you if I have uh, anyone to suggest. But actually, you could you could actually give me I don't know, uh, like a more elaboration exactly uh, on on, on what, what kind of person that you are looking for and what kind of discussion that you would like to have uh, with this person. Then with that information, I think I would be able to suggest you some names. Okay, that's that's great, Kak uh, Chanish. Thank you so much. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, before we end this session, we used to uh, like uh, taking picture together. Uh, okay. Sir, would you please help us 
Sure, sure. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yep. Uh, okay. Hey. You can like show your thumbs or you can show thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. One, two, okay. three. Thank you. Okay, great. And uh, right. uh, Kyle Kennedy, uh, one of us will post a recognition post on LinkedIn, and uh, we'll we'll keep this inside for our company training, so that uh, future people who want to learn from PR uh, will have a great mentor to learn from. Sure. Thank you. And I'm just I'm just wondering, like, uh, 